Hello Floss Tube. Uh, Elizabeth Martinez, Fancy Stitches here with my Floss Tube update number 282. Today is Saturday, May 20th. Where has the month gone? Um, 2023. And yesterday was my brother-in-law's birthday. And so tonight we're uh, supposed to go over there for uh, dessert or whatever. And uh, just to recap, I, I made this. I think I, I, I've talked about this several times, but I made this for my brother-in-law for his birthday. So I'm giving that to him. And uh, that was a, a quote that he had mentioned that he liked and I made a cross stitch out of it for him. Anyway, so um, so this month I I've been working on, of course, my Whipco uh, things and um, a sort of modified version of Mania. And I think there was a, uh, there were like three um, uh, kits that I was going to dye fabric for and work on, on them as possibilities and several uh, possibilities. But I think I, I ended up kind of changing plans halfway through. Um, so I think I, I did just 11 of the 23 I was planning on doing for the year 2023. Um, and so I'm doing like I did before, uh, sort of, I went to 11 and then I'm going backwards now to do a second day on each one. So that makes 22. And then uh, I'm gonna do, choose one other one to start for number 23. So I started sort of reversing course now. So it, it's kind of like, um, a recap of last week, but with an additional um, stitching on it. But I also have an FFO that I did, and I'll get to that in a second. I think I'll show that in a minute. But so, um, this is the channel about cross stitch, in case you didn't know. And I'm going to start off with um, my Whipco uh, whips. And let me make sure I get those first. My needle minders are kind of sticking together. And then I have them all these things just in a pile and I didn't really oh, didn't have them. Okay. So uh I worked on number twenty the numbers were twenty-three and twenty-five. And I started with my number twenty-five. Um, the Kind and Gentle Hol Woodland Holiday Sampler by Artful Offerings. And um, so I just, I uh, as of last week, I had, um, I had done my six days, uh, essentially, but I added a little more just to uh, reach a good stopping point. I just, uh, I did a little bit on this, on the deer's collar here because I to finish off this thread, uh, and then I finished the bunny, the big bunny's uh, sweater. So I did all the stripes and everything on the sweater. I just still didn't haven't done the you know the his body or this body of this other bunny, or the other red uh, color that goes on the ornaments, whatever. But um, and I didn't do the black of their eyes and the noses and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, that's uh, the six days. Uh, plus uh, of the goal. So I hit the goal for that one. And then my other uh, whip go pull was number 25, um, the nativity berry, the smaller berry here. And of course, like I said before, um, this model, the smaller one is done on silk gauze, which I did not, I'm not gonna do. So I'm just doing it one over one on 25 count Lugana from Hobby Lobby, and that's this here. I'm almost done with this with the stuff in the stable, not the ground here. Um, and then there's uh, uh, some swirlies on this side, and there's one up here on top, and then some uh, another swirly and some stars and stuff on this side. And this is the uh, part of a cow. <laughs> it's a brown and white uh, cow, and so this is the brown part that I just had. Um, some thread left over and I was doing this and I played an awesome game of thread chicken 
to finish this tail here. I was like, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, threading the needle and sticking it through and threading the needle and sticking it through because it was too short to turn around, you know, and all just, you know, and even like when I went to, to go, uh, to anchor the thread, I had to use my nettle needle threader, you know, because it was too tiny. I ended up like with a little tiny segment, make baby, I don't know what, it was a quarter of an inch <laughs> uh, long, just, just enough to, to, to snip it. But, um, but I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to have to start a new thread because I wanted to just finish that off. And I, because I don't know, you know, when I'm going to get back to it, I'd like to kind of do the outline of it. Um, it's in a, in a week's dye works color flatfish, I think, because if I were doing it on silk gauze, you know, none of this blue would be there. So I would have to, you know, stitch all, stitch it all in blue. And since I'm not doing it on the silk gauze, the blue is already there. This fabric is blue. And, um, so I just have like the, the cow here and there's a donkey over here. And then of course there's some swirlies up on top and an angel and a bird. Um, uh, so it's, it's not really, you know, it's not nearly finished. Just the stable is almost finished, but, but I would like to do the, the, the outline so that the, of the shape, you know, there's a lot of stitching to, to fill in the, you know, the, the ground underneath here or under the animals and a little bit under the, uh, the family in the stable. But, um, but I really like to get the outline done. And I'd like to finish inside the stable, if nothing else. But the, there's a little bit of an error. I made the same mistake my sister made in doing the larger. She did the larger of the, of the two berries. She did this larger one. They're slightly different. They're not exactly the same. But if you look at this picture, you can't tell. These swirlies look very white. Hmm? And... Um, and so I didn't even think twice about it because the symbols for the swirlies and the, this, the infant's blanket and these sheep, the symbols are very similar, but they're not quite the same. So uh, the, the symbols for the, the white parts, boots, uh, the color grits, um, I think it's a weak Star Wars color, I don't know. Anyway, um, the color grits is uh, is used for the blanket. Yeah, it's a weak Star Wars color. Um, for the blanket and um, the sheep. But uh, and, and I think I don't know if it's used for any of the swirlies. The color that's used for the swirlies. Well, the the. So the symbol for these is a double parallel line, like a like an equal sign. And the symbol for these swirly things is a triple parallel line. And so at first glance, it looks the same. You know, I didn't really look at it closely enough to realize, oh, hey, those are different. <laughs> so all of these little swirlies are done in grits. I, I mean, I did them in grits and it should have been done in the color, it's another week's Star Wars color called Honeysuckle. And if you, at first glance, you know, I mean, you can kind of, you can tell the difference side by side there, you know, one is a lot, very pale yellow. And of course the other one is an off white color or white, whitish. And um, yeah, so it was supposed to be this pale yellow is, you know, supposed to be this color. But, so I'm gonna do the rest of the swirlies inside this table in uh, grits. And then outside where the angel is, the angel is in white and there's a white bird, a dove, I guess. Um, and then there's a bunch of swirlies that are done in honeysuckle. So the swirlies outside this table, I'm going to do in honeysuckle, do them in the right color. And then, but the angel in white and the dove in white. And then these, those swirlies in white and grits, right? So, and the cow is grits. And there's a donkey over here that's another color, but yeah. So, yeah. So, <laughs> but, you know. 
And one thing I did is there's a little bit of, I did a, a little bit of uh, back stitching around the, this baby, the baby's head so it doesn't look like a giant pumpkin on the, on the, that Mary's holding. Um, you can, you know, it's, you know, it's not real, uh, you know, specific. It's not, you know, but, um, but I went and did it just because, to, to, to do a little differentiation because his, you can kind of, if you look at it very closely, you can kind of tell the difference in color. But, you know, at first glance, you can't, you know, you can't tell. So I, I did, uh, and I discovered as I was doing that, that there's actually a stitch that I, I didn't put in, um, that was supposed to be in there. Um, there, it's, you know, I was trying to darken up the, their skin tone just a little bit from what was uh, originally suggested. I just went just a hair darker, um, but it wasn't, uh, it wasn't enough to differentiate really right here, but where wherever I did when I did the face of the baby Jesus here, I I, I missed one little stitch, but you can't tell because it's so everything is so tiny in this. So but anyway, so yeah, that's uh, the nativity bear. And technically, I've done six days, but uh, I want to do another day to just to finish up that stable and. Uh, and like I said, I think the outline of the berry um, that I want to do so before I put it away. Because I don't know, um, I I would like to do it before this Christmas, but, you know. Sorry about that. <clears throat> you shall see. So then, um, I still haven't done my FFOs for my Wipco sheet. Those are still waiting in the wings. But speaking of FFOs, um, this was, um, I want to say, yeah, uh, uh, the goal, uh, this is la di da um, Kitty Kitty. la di da uh, was the, is the designer, L Lori Markovich. Um, but this is the, her uh, design, Kitty Kitty. With a slight modification, I've talked about this before. That instead of gray and white, I made them black and and well, gray is whitish, gray whatever. And then uh, C and H, Sierra Nolan Hotspur, my cats that I got in 1990. And I so so the borders are black because the, the cats are black. It's the same symbol, so I just did it all in black. And um, the the backing is uh, Lady Dot Lady Dot Creates. I think this is Bells of Ireland, if I recall correctly. It's a velveteen. And then um, I used this little sparkly yarn that I bought at Walmart, but um, it's it's like on a, a white thread, and there's the, the this velveteen fuzzy yarn, and then this little sparkly thing. It's like a twall, you know. And and when I was trying to sew it onto here, it was like coming apart. It was like I just like all this fuzz just came off. <laughs> and um, and actually, when I turned the pillow, I I stressed this opening a little bit, and it started to to fray. This this um, is thirty count linen by um, the primitive hair. But as I was, you know, turning it, it started to kind of come undone down here. So um, fortunately, I had a little bottle of Fray Check, and I, I used that on there uh, so that I could sew it because I would stick the needle in to, to, you know, put a stitch in, and it would, like, try to come apart. So I was, you know, <laughs> just uh, did a lot of Fray Check down here on that fabric. And then I was able to sew it easily enough. But then when I went to put the trim on there, the same, the, you know, again, the thread, the yarn was like trying to, to ravel. So I uh, put a lot of fray check on it. And then I you know, was able to, uh, I stitch, I, I, I prefer, even though I'm, it's difficult for me because I'm not very good at sewing. <laughs> um, I like the trim sewn on better than glued on, just because I, you know, 
it seems to me to be easier and you know less messy because I'm afraid that I would that I would you know that you'd be able to I don't, I, I just like the the sewn on look better um, but you know down here again you know as I was ending it you know I didn't want to you know when I snipped the yarn I didn't want it to come to undo itself so I use a lot of fray check. So if you if you were to touch it down here, you know, it's kind of ooky on the bottom, but uh, but it looks good. It looks okay. It looks fine. Um, and but I, I really like the look of this sparkly yarn. And I think the color it's a dark, sort of a dark olive, and it looks really good. I think with the the overall green look of the pillow. So so this is uh, Kitty Kitty by La Da. My FFO, and I think the goal. When was when did it was it that I worked on that? Um, April, yeah, in April, the goal was to finish it, and so I went ahead and I had since I had it, you know, lying around here. Um, when I was doing other FFO stuff, I went ahead and did it, and um, and then. Uh, uh, I still haven't done my FFOs for this month's uh, um, uh, goals on my WIPGO board, but I, I've sort of been, because I was working on that on Thursday, I was thinking through uh, what I wanted to do for those FFOs, so um, I think I've prepared myself enough to, to be able to do that uh, for the most part, yeah. So then I was also working on, um, like I said, the reverse of my, of my, uh, my, new starts um so oh no no before i get to that <laughs> um last week i was talking about how i wanted to do um this pattern mother on mother's day this is by um Isaiah gladstone of new york dreamer is the uh, her company so um this is the this is the pattern I talk about how you know it has these little buttons on it that you know it doesn't say anything about them or whatever, and I know I could like you know find those buttons and order them or whatever, but I think like I said I think I'm gonna stitch do these stitched uh, rows uh, things that I have from another pattern um, that I think I'm gonna put on there. But anyway, but I digress. So I so I had this pattern that I want to work on, and I had I think I had done um, this bottom sprig or part of it anyway like this one and then these over here but i've not done all of it yet um so i thought well you know do i want to work on some more of this and i thought well that's kind of you know kind of neither here nor there and kind of boring and um there's these little you know uh gray little design things but instead of doing any of that, I decided to do the word mother. So I did that. So like I said, there's like little gray, you know, designs here on either side of this word. And then there's some more leaves and stuff. And then there's a bunch of uh, backstitched words um, like uh, give, hope. Uh, I can't read that. Um, joy, love, um, and so forth. Smile. So there's all these uh, words here around the around the uh, the design. So I haven't you know gotten to any of that yet, but but yeah. So I worked on on the big mother part. So that's that was nice, and I think that is. That might be on my, on my, uh, whip go board. Maybe not. Maybe not. I could have sworn it was, but maybe it's not on here. I don't see it. So it's a good thing I worked on it because it's not doesn't seem to be on here. Nope. So <laughs> that's mother. Um, and then 
So one of the other ones I worked on was um, the number 11. Uh, <clears throat> April Dolce Dormir by Madame Chantilly. This, the big, I was going to do the whole big thing here. And I started uh, up here in this corner. And last week, I think I had, I mean, uh, yeah, I had just done, you know, a few uh, leaves in the beginning of it. So I did a second day on it and uh, got a little further along. And again, I was just working on the leaves because, you know, of that border, uh, you know, top border thing. And then I'll eventually work my way down and, and add uh, the white petals in there and, and then eventually get to the bunnies so that this is... Uh, yeah, so this is the second day of that. And I, again, I don't know when I'm going to get back to it. I'm going to finish all my new starts, so. And then, um, and then this is uh, another uh, another French designer, uh, Jardin Privé. Lapin dans mon jardin. A bunny in my garden. Uh and it's so cute. I just love this bunny. It has a big, big back foot and his little hand. He's so carrots. So adorable. I just love this bunny. And there's, you know, just a very spring, uh, springy design there. So I started in the middle on um, just this, I'm just doing this branch. Um, so it doesn't look like much. And this is 18 count Ada. That I dyed myself. This is the center. This is marking the center with it. But so I'm just doing the branch in the middle here. There's you know the bugs and some flowers and stuff like that on the branch. But yeah, so that's two days on that as well. <laughs> and then today I was working on this. Um, this is a heartstring samplery. Um, Seahorse Soiree de Scorn You. Yeah, so, and all I'm, all I'm really working on is the border right now. Um, and oh, I, I just started, I just started one of these little sea turtles. Um, during our Sticks and Strings video we were filming earlier. So this is the, the border, and I just got to the end of the thread here, and I just decided, just for fun, to start this little, uh, sea turtle here so it doesn't look like much yet but you know that's gonna be that's gonna be one border of it and so this is the second day of this so I might do probably a little bit more on that today um, but like I said we're going to uh, my brother-in-law's uh, to celebrate his birthday tonight so I don't know when when I'll get around to that but golly that's about, that's all I did for stitching uh, this week was finish up on those. Um, but then I um, just went to Joanne's with uh, my sister. She had to get some, some things. She's trying to finish her, she has a bunch of berries that she had uh, uh, finished stitching and she's working on the little toppers for those. And so, um, so uh, she was looking for something specific. So I went with her um, to Joanne's because, you know, what the heck. <laughs> and um, so while I was there, of course, I, I'm, I have, uh, I keep talking about how I need to dye linen. And I still have a stack of, of linen, that, um, things that I, I wanted to dye. As a matter of fact, I think when I was first uh, um, thinking about stuff I wanted to do for Mania, um, I have these uh, kit things that I, I wanted to dye because they came with, of course, the, the kit Ada, and it's just 14 count white Ada, and I want to go through and and uh, and dye those, you know, before I work on them. And um, but so so while so while I was at Joanne's, I bought more fabric. Uh, so this is uh, 28 count Monaco. This is my jam. I love this this uh, uh, size and and uh, type of fabric. And then this is eighteen count fiddler's cloth, which is Ada. Um, but so I have a, I have a couple of the Prairie Schooler Santas, 
and they were originally on my list, but I don't think I, I started any of them. But um, I have one piece of fabric that I think will only fit one of the little Santas. It's just, it, I had cut out, I'd used part of it for uh, another Santa, I think. And I just had that leftover uh, fab piece of fabric. So I, and I think it's 18 count uh, fabric, but I think it's been coffee dye. So I think I, I want to, I want to, to, to do that with this just so that I have enough to do both uh, those other chances as well. And I don't know when, uh, like I said, I, th I was originally going to do them as part of this mania thing um, before I decided to do <laughs> what I'm doing now. But so, you know, I don't know. <laughs> if I, if I dye enough fabric and change my mind, maybe I'll do that, but I don't know. But so while while I was there, I was about I was telling Eve, you know, oh, I'm done. I'm just I've got those two things of fabric, and you know, I was um, because I was looking at their their uh, cross stitch stuff, and there's nothing there that I really 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 needed. Um, and so I thought, you know, I'm gonna you know, quit. Well, I'm not gonna buy stuff just to buy stuff. And so I had bought because I had already bought the two pieces of fabric just to buy stuff, and. Um, and so I went over and I found her, you know, in the little, you know, looking at the buttons. And um, while I was there, I got some, I got some buttons. So the, for the Seahorse Soiree Biscornio, it's done with, um, I think she used um, like two, uh, like old mother of pearl buttons, you know, for the top and the bottom. I think it looks like, like a blue one, a blue button or something there. But I think when I put my Bushcornia together, I found these little fishy buttons. So um, I'm going to pick two of those. Probably the blue one and maybe the orange one or something. So that it'll stand out a little more. But um, but yeah, I thought those would be cute with the Bushcornia. And then um, I think picked up a couple others. Now these are shank buttons, but I think wouldn't that make a nice needle minder? And the same thing with this. This big ladybug. It's cute. And again, these are, are shank buttons, but there's room in the on the back for for uh, needle minders. And same thing with these gnomes. So um, I don't know if I'm gonna keep those. Or whatever. Because <laughs> as I was doing all this project I thought, I need more needle minders. I have a few, uh, I have a, maybe a couple that, you know, um, Hobby Lobby has some that are, that are nice, but they're, they have those little buttons on the back, sort of rounded. They have a magnet, but then the, the, their, like domed, you know, covers on the back and, you know, you can still stick a needle to it, but it's better to, to stick it, you know, to the front, um, the stuff that's, that's on the front part of the, of the the needle minder but um so I, I have a couple of those but all my other needle minders are stuck to other projects and so i like the this um this seahorse soiree i had got the the needle you know just like stuck through the fabric here because i don't know I, i'm out of needle minders so i might just make a couple for myself out of these i don't know um but yeah so um I think that's about it. This is a very, very short video, but um, like I said, I, I'm, I'm sort of in that process of trying to uh, finish my, my Whipco uh, things and then um, work on, on those, uh, the second day of those uh, new starts. But, you know, the more I think about it, all this, I have like three um, kit items and then the Santas and a couple of other things that I was like, oh, um, that I want to start. Um, so I don't know. I, I'm like, it, it, the easiest thing would be to, to reverse and do a second day on each of the, the 11 that I've done so far and then, and then have one more. That would be the easiest thing. but. I don't know. <laughs> like I said, I'm, I'm kind of itching to, to, you know, to just do, do a whole bunch of new starts. But, um, I don't know. 
And one thing I wanted to mention, um, somebody else had, had mentioned some of this, I think 911 Stitcher had talked about um, the lotion that she uses to uh, on her hands when she's stitching. Um, because, of course, as stitchers, you don't want to use um, anything that's going to be too greasy or to, you know, leave anything on your fabric or whatever. And so, of course, there are lots of uh, lotions for stitchers that are um, uh, very good to use. And one of them, of course, is Stitcher's Lotion. This is, um, you can get in a few places. They have it like, like at the attic is where I think I found some before. And I found this somewhere else. Not at the attic, but somewhere else. I, I don't remember where exactly. There's not a, a label on here. Um, but this is good stuff. And there's a few different um, scents. So, you know, and it's, and it's fairly mild. It's not a real strong scent. And um, uh, this other one is Gloves in a Bottle. And this is one that my sister Naomi uh, turned me on to. This is from, I, I, I got this uh, particular bottle at uh, Tempe Yarn and Fiber, which is a, a yarn store primarily, a knitter, knitter's store. But this is, uh, this is very good also. Gloves in a Bottle. And you can buy this at... CVS, I think. CVS carries this, as, as I recall. So, you know, you may be able to find it, you know, cheaper at CVS, I don't know, than at the, the yarn store. But um, you probably find it at, at the other stitching stores, yarn stores, things like that. So, um, so those are, are two good, uh, good options uh, for that sort of thing. Anyway, I just want to mention that. So, um... I think that's all. This is a very short video. It's only only 30 minutes long, but um, I think there was something else. Um, our our May uh, sale on the at our uh, Etsy shop, Three Sisters Creative, is still going on. 25% um, off of a purchase of $25 or more, and. Um, I'm trying to think if there's more that I need to mention. Um, I don't think so. I just still have gone through everything pretty quickly up here. Um, so as I said, we're we, you know, we're going tonight to uh, to celebrate my brother-in-law's birthday, and um, so I'm trying to zip through this pretty quickly. Um, but I think that's it. If I ever get around to dyeing fabric, I'll show you what what uh, what I'm uh, what I'm gonna come up with. As a matter of fact, I have um, some fabric, um, some that I dyed. Uh, another piece of that blue steel, uh, twenty five count in Monaco, um, uh, and some other other uh, pieces. A, a couple of larger sized, um, uh, kind of scrappy pieces. Well, I think this one um, that uh, that I did uh, this on this this fabric here. This is I want to say 32 count um, coffee or tea and or tea dyed um, fabric here. I have more of this because I think I think this was uh, cut out of a larger piece, so there's a lot more of this. Um, and so um, I have the three uh, charts that I have for um, cross stitch camp for uh, this summer, June, June July, and August. Um, I was uh, looking to see what I have in there and what uh, would be um, a good size for the three pieces that I that I've chosen, and they're all uh, on the smaller side. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm hoping that um, some of the you know smaller pieces that I have in there uh, that I have set aside would will work for those without me having to you know chop them up chop up a larger piece that's good for a larger project you know if if uh, some of the smaller ones I have in there are are the right size um, but uh, you know and, but if not then of course. I resort to dyeing fabric if I ever get around to doing it. 
and and June is coming up very soon. So I whatever the the first piece the 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 one with the bird the little um, I showed it last week the itty bitty kitty and the baby robin or whatever that's called. <laughs> um, uh, that one, like I said, I, I if if I've got fabric to start that one, and I think I do, I'm pretty sure I do. Um, you know, that's ready to go. But the other ones, I, I, I have to, you know, put them in my cross stitch calculator thing and and um, make sure that I that I have something appropriate. Um, oh, I know what I was going to talk about. I went to the attic yesterday on a whim. We were we were um, sort of on that side of. Uh, town in actually in Gilbert um, but not far from Mesa and um, so I had a morning appointment out there so on the way back my sister was driving back she said we're kind of close to the attic there Mesa on the way home so you know <laughs> we just stopped there on a whim because neither of us needed anything that you know specific from the attic um, and, uh, but so, you know, we just went in on the off chance that, you know, hey, what the heck, we're, we're in the neighborhood. And um, so, uh, so we were both looking around and Eve had had um, some pattern that she had seen, but she wasn't quite sure who the designer was. And, um, but so she was just kind of looking around to see if she could see, um, that pattern or something, you know, and, and, um, and they, I think they, they were trying to help her look up, but she wasn't quite sure, like I said, what the, what the name of the pattern was, who the, the designer was, and so, so it was kind of, she didn't want to buy a mistake, you know, buy something that wasn't what she wanted, you know, but anyway, so she was looking for that, and then I, I was looking for, you know, as part of this, this cross-stitch challenge, um, one of the challenges was one of the items was like um, something new to you and so I was looking at a few different options because I thought well that that uh, itty bitty kitty thing but you know and the baby Robin that um, I think is a designer I've never done before and so you know theoretically I could have shifted things around a little bit you know uh, because it was again the the three items for the cross stitch camp are a bird, something with a bird in it, something that grows, and and a, a new to you thing, uh, either a new designer, a new thread, new fabric, whatever. And so, um, so if, as far as new to me things go, um, fabric, you know, it, the only way it would be new to me was is if I like bought some fabric that I've never worked on before, but there's, you know, I worked on 14 count, 16 count, 18 count, um, 22 count, um, different kinds of, uh, different counts of linen, you know, 28 count, even weaves and, you know, whatever, 32 count, um, 46 count, whatever, you know. So, and, and threads would probably have to be something like certain, a certain brand of silks or something to, for it to be new to me. Or maybe sulkies. That was one thing I thought about. Um, uh, I don't, I, there was some time ago, I think it was, um, uh, oh, what do you call it? Um, I can't think of her name now. But she did the, the uh, chocolate bunnies. Um, Life needs more chocolate bunnies, or something like that. The name of the of the pattern, but I think originally it came with. You could order, I should say, a you could order a sulky um, pack to go with that. If you know, um, it you could either use the DMC conversion or you could use the sulky threads, um, and I used the DMC uh, conversion, um, but. Um, but something like that, you know, that, that calls for sulky threads or whatever. Um, but, you know, I didn't want, I don't want anything really large. So I, you know, I, I want something that I could, that I could finish within a week, I mean a month. Um, but uh, there was nothing, you know, quite 
that spoke, you know, that I, I, I really, 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 really wanted or needed to have or anything. And um, there were a few things that I thought, oh, that would be really nice. Just, you know, weren't related to, to the upcoming um, cross-stitch camp. You know, just things that I like, oh, that's really nice looking. Um, and I, you know, I, I was trying to restrain myself. <laughs> not buy something just for the sake of buying it. So in the end, n neither of us bought anything <laughs> um, at the attic. So like I said, there were a lot of things I could have bought. And, you know, and I didn't think while I was there, I'm, uh, what I was, you know, thinking of originally was like if, to see if, if the attic or somebody still had a hard copy of Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher Spring Issue to see you know, if there were any left over and anybody had any of the spring issues. And I, while I was at the attic, I didn't think to look, to look and see. You know, on, their, on their, the checkout counter, uh, they have a you know, little display there with whatever their latest magazines are. And, and usually there's a copy of the Punch Needle and Premier Stitcher there. And, and so, you know, usually when I'm checking out, you know, I'll, I'll look to see what they have. And, I didn't even look at that at the checkout counter because I wasn't buying anything. And so it was right, I didn't look to see if the magazine was there or not. I, I have no idea. Um, but it's probably, it's late enough that probably, you know, uh, I don't know that anybody's gonna have that hard copy um, left over anymore. I, but, you know, it could have been at the attic and I have no idea because I didn't look. Um, but yeah, and, and, and I was thinking you know, one part of my brain had been thinking, oh, I should check at the attic to see if they have a copy of that magazine. And then when I was there, I totally forgot. So anyway, um, so, you know, yeah, if I just got around to it, I have the, like I said, access to the online um, version of the magazine. I just like, had kind of wanted a hard copy of it, but, uh, Maybe I'll look online and see if if anybody like one two three stitch still has it or something like that. So I don't know. Anyway, I think that's uh, probably all I I have. Um, so I will see you next week and maybe we'll see how much more progress I have on my on my new starts on my the second day of my new starts or whatever I decide to do. Um, but. Uh, yeah, so that's it for now, I think. So I will see you next week. And until then, happy stitching. Thanks for watching. Bye. I'll see you later.